Top 25 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that define the Yu-Gi-Oh meta playground. Whoa! What is the best Yu-Gi-Oh card of the meta playground here? Top 25 cards? Mr. Volcano! He looks like an Infernoble. Dark Master? Yep. Uh, was it, isn't there like a slightly racist fake uh, Exodia monster called like Evil Rabbi or something like that? Um, infinite cards. That one is weird. Uh, but it was really good uh, because Darkly Big Rabbi. <laughs> Why do you people remember this shit? <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Solar Flare Dragon. This card is crazy. While you control another Pyro, this cannot be attacked. A, Duploc, Double Solar Flare Dragon, Thousand Burn every standby phase, or is it end phase, during each of your end phases? Your end phases, okay, there you go, nice. Mr. Volcano! Why is this on the list? Who the fuck played this card? Uh, for his actual presence in our early Yu-Gi-Oh games and more for what he represents. God-awful normal monsters that we played because, oh, okay, that's fair enough. Um, is this a bonfire target? <laughs> Mr. Volcano is iconic in my mind for the prehistoric Yu-Gi-Oh. He's not even half bad for level 5. That's true, to be fair. In some of the, like, the absolute trash tier normal monsters that existed back in the day, a tribute 2100 monster is up there. His art is dope, and at a young age, the art was half the reason to play a guard. See, a launcher spider. True, true, true. Dan Kito, the Cure Master. Wait, this is, is this like the actual first ever good article? Normally, these articles are like terrible. It's like, 2022, uh, Meta Deck Combo Guide. First, you want to normal summon Silverfang. Then you want to activate Raigeki. This will clear your opponent's board to allow you to attack directly. Um, but this this seems like there's actual good stuff here. Like, this is true. Dan Kido, I remember playing that, right? Why? Because it gained life points. And if your life points hit zero, you lose the game. Like, hello? Just think about it. Like, hello? Um, if 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 your life points are, are at zero, you lose, right? At, so, yeah, th this makes sense. Uh, little bro asked if you're ready, then we're at re Okay, let me finish this article, Mr. Schmidt. Sorry, you know, we can't all attend to the world champion's need at any one time. Um, free life points? Are you kidding me? Run him at three, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Scrap Iron Scarecrow. Bro, this thing was actually just Mystic Mine. I swear to God. If you ever played when you were a child, this was literally Mystic Mine. Uh, Scrap Iron was apparently the defining for the Playground Duels. You had maybe one Mirror Force in your deck, which left room for a stew of lesser battle traps, like Negate Attack. Draining Shield? Oh, Draining Shield was crazy. Nightmare Wheel. Along with the Burn a Turn cards like Mask of Dispel and Accursed, it was devastating. Uh, no one would play back removal to save their lives. No, that wasn't available. Early starter decks were actual packing meta threats. Uh, were packing actual meta threats like Heavy Storm and Giant Trader? Were they? Early starter decks? I mean, I played with the starter deck Joey Kaiba Yugi stuff, and I don't remember Heavy Storm being in there, was it? I don't think it was. Maybe I don't know. Um, Mystical Space Typhoon. I never owned MST. This is a LOB card, I think, right? Or um, Magic Ruler card, set to number two. I only played with the starter decks as a child, so uh, I don't remember seeing a lot of this. Unfortunate. Um, MST, good staple. What the hell are these ones? Space Mambo, Neo, Battle Ox, Darkfire. Warrior Digrapher, any other 1700 beater we could find, true. Share the Spain? I never played Share the Spain. Oh, this card was awful. This card was not good. Did it have its neat uses? Maybe. Would you splash into every deck because its effect was so weird? Absolutely. You were the coolest kid in the cafeteria if you were the first one to show your friends convulsion in action. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Infinite cards. Marshmallow, another Mystic Mine. Like, actual just straight up Mystic Mine, you know? You have no way to out this in a standard... Uh, in a standard playground metagame, it's actually impossible. Do not even attempt it. Exodia! I mean, this was really high rarity. You were not getting this as a kid. If you were lucky enough to have all the pieces, you played all the pieces. Those were the rules. How did you get the head? Because I know in Japan you had to, like, you know, do, like, actual PvP at the Tokyo Dome to, like, get the uh, promo card. But in the ECG, how did you get Exodia? Weird question. How do you get head? Oh, uh, you guys are so funny! Ha ha ha! You guys are so funny. Sex re <laughs> sex reference. Not to mention properly shuffling your cards was something of a learned art, so chances were Exodia was just chilling in your deck, all stacked up. <laughs> what is the self-report? So chances were, if you were a kid playing Exodia, you were just cheating. Uh, Megamorph, that's an iconic one. Insect barrier and DNA surgery. Holy crap, this was a crazy combo. Insects, your opponent control cannot declare an attack. Plus DNA surgery, that's GG. Final countdown, first win condition. Garzette. I don't remember ever seeing this guy. Doubling a monster's attack, Garzette gets attack equal to twice of that tributed monster, meaning not only could he turn your Dark Fire into Dark Fire Soldier 1, <laughs> he could become the supersized version of any boss monster. Raging Flame Sprite, what is this, plus a thousand every turn or something? 
Can attack directly. If this inflicts battle damage by a direct attack, it gains a thousand. If this guy connects twice, it was basically game over. 2100 beater that you would protect with something? Unbelievable. Especially if you're playing Gravity Bind. This guy plus Gravity Bind was actually just an FTK. Like, you couldn't out this guy. Level 3, so it doesn't go to defense and your opponent can't run over it. So, you know. Dark Master. Either you played this obviously fake Yu-Gi-Oh card thinking it was real, or you played Dark Bigly Rabbi. That was the other good one. Uh, Mechanical Hound. Along with its decent stat line, Hound has the ability to completely lock your opponent out of activating spells while you have no cards in your hand. Shoutouts to that guy I know who is my friend that sharked a child at a regional for playing a Mechanical Hound that was slightly damaged. Shoutouts to that guy. <laughs> uh, the Egyptian uh, God cards. Slifer, the Wing Draw, and Obelisk. Uh, I have the slightest idea where people were getting these enticingly colored Yu-Gi-Oh legends from, but as I grew older, seeing them in the original blue, red, and yellow in their binders became a common experience. One of my, um... Very rich friends owned a playset of these cards. Uh, his, his dad was like a doctor or something, so he just had like a ton of money. And, uh, you know, he was like one of the first people to have like a computer. Um, and then one of the first people in our school to like have like internet access, right? Which is crazy, you know? Um, and uh, he had access to eBay, which meant that he could buy cards. And uh, he bought the, uh, these cards and uh, he owned them. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And he let me borrow them for a whole weekend. That guy was so nice to me. He let me borrow his skateboard as well. Oh, man. I was just leeching off this, like, really rich Indian dude in my school. I miss him. I hope he's doing really well. Uh, prohibition. Under the right circumstances, it was the ideal floodgate against that one extremely annoying or busted card. The Fiend Mega... Si oh, this, this thing is crazy. This is Cyber Dragon 2. I remember just starting it all when I first... Is this card came out before Cyber Dragon? Bro, low-key, this guy is just better than Cyber... Okay, re relax. But, you know, it's good. 2004, Dart Beginning. Holy! Cyber Dragon 1, dude! Patrician, actual crazy card. This thing was played because the rulings, like, were un unreal. You choose the attack targets for your opponent's attacks. Like, the amount of, like, dumb shit that you would come up with as a kid to, like, justify some of this garbage, you know? Like, haha, I'm going to redirect and attack yourself. Um, or you know, attack your own monsters, which that's not how that works. It doesn't work. You can't make them attack their own monsters. It just means that you can choose which monsters they attack on your side of the field. You can't make them attack themselves. Uh, but, you know, this would usually end in, like, whoever had, like, you know, um, the, the, the most, um, what's it called? Like, overbearing father or mother that would, like, be, like, picking up the kids, like, after school, and then she would be the judge and rule, and she would issue the ruling. Um, that's basically, like, how this card was solved most of the time. You'd ask, like, one of the on-staff, on like, teachers in the playground, and they would do the ruling for it. That was the judge, right? Like, they, they, they don't know what a Yu-Gi-Oh card is, but they would read the card and be like, yeah, that seems fine. The tip cards! Cards like Mystic Tomato get their effects when destroyed as a result of battle. This means that the card was destroyed because of the, battle, the battle's damage calculation. If a card was destroyed during a battle because of a card effect like Man-Eater Bug, then the card was destroyed by the card effect. It was not destroyed as a result of battle in this case. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. Destroyed by battle and destroyed by card effect are two very different things. True, true, true. And number one, we have exchanged. Possibly the worst card used for the greatest evil. Um, oof, you got me. All right, take a card from my hand. I guess I'll take your bean soldier since the only card. Damn, you got my Jinzo. You summon Jinzo to attack for game. I don't have a quick play spell. I guess you win. Hey, where are you going? Duncan, you still have my Jinzo. Duncan, stop. No. No, right? <laughs> hey, okay. Hey, you still have my card. Sir, come back. If you were a kid, exchange was permanent, dude. <laughs> Cry about it. All right, this is a this is a great article. Holy crap! This is the, the genuinely this is the first good article I've ever read. What year was this posted? Oh wow, this was like last month. This was this year. Yo, shout outs to Nick the, the Nick Theorion Theorin. Yeah, this is the first good. Um, what's it called? A uh, Yu-Gi-Oh article. They don't happen often.